when we spoke to him just a moment ago, he said he didn't really put too much stock in, you know, what you were saying, but he was most bothered by the comments you had made by his family. Is it just a little games play or what drove you to make uh, You know, uh, Chris ties his family into every every situation that in the fight game, so I don't know. It's uh, it, it's unfortunate. It makes you feel bad for him, but it's uh, I can't help but say I, I see people with families and I see how it takes away from the fight game. The fight game is different than any other sport. It's not the same as anything else. It's like you got to consume yourself. You have a training camp, and you got to. I put so much into. I don't have any energy. I don't have any time for anything but recovery and training. And focusing on what's next and, and you can't help if you have a big family it's gonna take away i've seen it over and over i have a big camp i see how things play in you know if you're a family man especially like chris it's gonna happen it's gonna take away from you know the objective and i i love family i love i love what i have i have a big family and, and i love kids and I, I foresee myself happening but i'm not gonna do that till after i'm done until later in this game when i'm on my way out he was over there saying being single would be more of a distraction than having a family. I can cut off my single leg. You can't cut off a family. What's this point? And like, I, I don't, I, I partied. I go out and I have fun. I enjoy myself. I've done that my whole career. I've never changed. I've never escalated that just because I've gotten more fame. No. I do it, but I always have my cut off. And, and I can do that. I can't cut off a family. So, so whatever. I mean, say what you want. I put more work and more focus. And I, I got put more in this game than anybody. And, and that's why I have my, you know, that's why what comes out comes out. When does the cutoff happen before camp start? When is the cutoff for the single life? You know, it, it just depends. It depends. <laughs> I, 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 de I definitely. <laughs> the night before. I definitely, you know, as things build up, I, I definitely cut it out. You know, so I mean, I, I, I don't go out and party. Like, you know, at least I don't go out and even drink. I started drinking red wine on the weekends. I have a couple glasses of red wine on the weekends all through camp. That's it. You know what I mean? And I don't drink any of real alcohol, the other stuff, the bad stuff. <laughs> Probably like, you know, 10 to 12 weeks out. So um, I, I cut back everything way in advance and I'm just becoming more and more of a professional as I become, you know, as, as the status grows and there's more on the line. So uh, there's more incentive for me to do my job, you know, and be better and improve upon what I have. Red wine's very, I've done some, a lot of research on red wine and it's, you know, it's, as long as you don't break the barrier, you know, two glasses of wine, it starts to be counterproductive, but, you know, uh, you know, get a glass, a nice large glass of wine, Friday, Saturday night, kick in a little resveratrol, a little natural testosterone builder, you know, you got to keep up with all these cheaters, you know, shit. So I get, I get my sleep, get a little red wine. Sweet or dry? Uh, I like, a, I like my Pinots, you know, I'll take a little Zen every once in a while. So, just mix mix it up from time to time. Nothing too sweet. Is the, uh, you heard you talk about the celebration when you won the belt. Uh, how big that was. Uh, how's the celebration going to be uh, this time? Uh, the victory over the next? I don't know. I'm not really too focused. I'm sure we'll have a great summer. There's some fun stuff planned, no doubt. Always is. Lots of red wine? Give the red wine a break. Good, <laughs> good training, good, good, good training camp. It's a good training camp drink. Yeah. What's your thought on the rematches? Did, did you really want to have a rematch with him right away, or and if not, who, who did you want to fight? Uh, I think I was pretty vocal about that. I thought you know it'd be fun to do that Vitor fight. You know he had a good win, and uh, they didn't really like it at the time, and uh, so. Yoel fell out with that and didn't give me many options. So and so, Weidman, Weidman was, the, was the option. So, I, you know, there was a couple people talking and he was immediately trying to get a rematch. It's fine with me. I just want, want a fight that the fans want and it's going to make me the most money. Do you think he'll be the same fighter the first time? Uh, I don't see how he could be. You know, I, I think he's, his confidence is shaken. I think I, I've, I've gotten to him, and he thinks he's gonna—he's got to question himself next time around. He has to, and uh, so he's gonna—he's gonna avoid certain situations. We'll see. I mean, obviously, his his takedowns weren't really effective. He's kind of scared of my guillotine after the first round, so uh, I know he's working on that. But guess what? I mean, you avoid one thing, you're gonna fall into another thing. So I, I'll beat him everywhere this fight goes. I don't see anywhere where he can beat me. In addition to your own fight, are there any fights that you're looking forward to seeing? 
I'm looking forward to seeing DC and, and uh, John Jones get after it. I'm looking forward to seeing Kane, you know, get back in there and do his thing. I'm, and of course, I was really looking forward to seeing Khabib. So I, I'm, I want to see my guys, you know. And, and uh, there's there's a lot of big fights out there. Dan and and Machida coming up. That's another another fun fight. I want to see how how they bounce bounce back. And you know, I'm pulling for my man Dan. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what's going on. You said he, sorry, you said he used to train really non-specifically. He would just train himself to be the best fighter he could be in whatever the opponent had, he would fight. And he said that losing to you changed that. He's trying to train a lot more specifically. He's got a coach who's watching everything you do, trying to get in. What, where do you like to draw a balance between what a fighter does, what an opponent does, and what you do when you approach training? Uh, you know, I definitely strategize on, on every opponent I go to, you know, basically, but it's, it's, it's more about myself and it's about you know, I, I'm so well-rounded that I don't that that I can like, kind of gear a fight towards where it's going to favor me best. Uh, so I, I definitely I like with Weidman, I, I focused on you know capitalizing on takedowns, making them pay for that, and and, uh, and kept, you know taking advantage. You know, with shutting that down, I knew the fight would shift. You know, once I started shutting those takedowns down, and it did. Uh, you know, I mean, for Weidman, it's broke, so he better fix it. I mean, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But in that same sense, like you have to, it's that like same context. You have to improve. There's always room for improvement, and so you're always. I'm always trying to add a little piece, you know, a little little piece of the puzzle. So I'm always, I'm dabbling with different guys and see if I like it, see if I don't. And I have a training room with some of the best guys in the world to try it, see if it's working. And, uh, and so I, I just I gear and I, I watch a lot of film. I, I try to always better myself. I focus on myself a lot, you know, and I think watch lots. A lot of video on myself, training and fighting, and and, uh, and see things I like and I don't like, and, and what I want to improve. It's the key is sort of to stay unsatisfied, you know, to always think there's something to improve. Because that's the you guy, always the guy you always have to have that know. beginner's mindset. Yeah. You know, you always have to be able to believe that you can learn something from everybody. You know, when you, when you stop believing that, you just you, you're not going to grow from that. And so, uh, you know, I think that's the mindset to have, and and that you always seeking information and trying to better myself. You know? better my you know it's like my body it's I, I've contemplated many different avenues of uh, branching out you know, so you never know uh, footwork wise and body mechanics and, and all kinds of stuff you know uh, you know you might might see me in ballet do gymnastics as the body gets old you got to keep everything going yeah definitely definitely put the tutu on but I, I, I've thought about it not so much, intensity <laughs> stars. Yeah, More thing. functional stuff, you know what I mean? But like, you know, just thoughts. You know, I always, I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not scared to dabble in any different market that's gonna help benefit me, be more sports specific, and like kind of, if I can see some benefit to it going into the sport. What impact does having a fight here in LA change it as opposed to Vegas, or who's saying he'd love to do one in New York? LA's awesome, LA's, LA's Hollywood, you know what I mean? It's, it's where all the stars are at, and so you're always gonna get them to come out. Um, I think it's going to create a lot of energy and a lot of hype to the fight, and and, uh, and it's California. This is me. This is my home. This is this is it. So uh, I'm excited. This is a hop, skip, and a jump for me, and so uh, you know I'm pumped to come back here and do this. When you want to go in there, does it make any difference geographically where you are? If you're in your hometown or your home state? Uh, not so much. Not so much. I. I uh, it doesn't. I just block it out. You know, I I, I let go of the. Of where we're at, I kind of have tunnel vision when it's fight time, and I just focus and I walk out. Whether they're booing or they're cheering, nothing's going to change my attitude, my my fight. What is the biggest frustration? Pretty hard that you know these injuries, these things happen. Yeah, injuries, things happen. We have a high level of competition at the gym, but we all are family, and we don't try to hurt each other. Things happen, you know, from time to time. But uh, I don't believe we have a big problem with injuries. I, I know myself, I know DC, and I know. You know, a lot of guys, they just, you know, you have a couple injuries that plague you. Khabib, is sure he has, he's had a couple in Kane, but, you know, I mean, the rest of us have been fairly healthy. Have you sp spoken to Khabib since uh, yesterday, before some old doctors today? Uh, do I haven't, man. I just caught wind of that this morning. I've been on my own PR tour, so that's unfortunate. I'm really looking forward to that. And Khabib, obviously, earning his shot at top. Now it's uh, back to where I think he's, you know, the uncrowned champ. So I uh, I uh, I want that guy to have his, his day too. I love Khabib. He's a very, you know, hardworking, dedicated individual, and he's had a rough run. And, and uh, so we'll see. We'll see what, what they come up with if it makes a fight or not.
Do you think it's warranted that uh, John Jones and uh, OSP are fighting for uh, an interim title? Uh, no. In the DC no. I mean, it just been like a number I, one I mean everyone knows John Jones. He's why make it an interim title? There's no point. John Jones is John Jones. I mean, he's technically never lost the belt. So what's the point of making an interim title? What, what's your take on the interim title, just in, in any way, class? Are you, are you a fan of it? Doesn't seem like you are. I think it's bullshit. <laughs> I think interim titles are bullshit. You may have already answered this, but with DC's injury, how how has that affected your training? Uh, as in affected my training that much, you know, I mean, we have, we have a lot of guys in the gym, and I, I, I work with a lot of people, so, uh, DC is the do his thing, and it sounds like it'll be a short recovery, and we're fine, and I got, I got Kane's coming back healthy, and we've got so many other guys in our gym that I work with, I don't, I don't need, <laughs> I don't need to work on my wrestling, <laughs> Wyman's not going to out-wrestle me, we already saw, we already saw that. Tell me, in the first fight, you mentioned that Jacques Correa was probably your toughest fight you've ever had. Is this still true? I think that given the time frame of where I was in my career and how good I was, uh, I think uh, I was a young kid and off a long layoff, and I don't think I was as refined as I am now. And, and uh, at the moment, Jacques Correa was the toughest guy. I don't know if he was the toughest guy I fought, but at the moment, he was. You know, uh, so, tough guy, but I, it'd be... Be a different story this time around. I'd, I'd put an ending to that, to that story for sure. There seems to be a more animosity this time around between you and Chris. Um, is that coming more from his end, or do you think it's just the same? Is it just acting different? I think so. I think I don't think I've changed at all from the first fight. I think I, I've told him exactly what I was going to do, and I went out there and did it. Chris uh, wants to flip the role on me and call me cocky. I, I said. I've never changed my, my, my stance on fighting him. I said he was slow, I said I said he was clumsy, and I said I was gonna take advantage of him, and I did. Chris, Chris uh, <clears throat> calls me cocky. He was the one speaking about himself in the third person. Last time around saying that he couldn't see himself losing to Luke Rockwell. Well, guess what? Oh, I'm gonna break you. Guess what, I broke you, Chris. You did lose to Luke Rockwell, and that's what happened. That's what's gonna happen again. This time I'm not gonna break you. I'm gonna hurt you. I'm gonna finish you, and it's gonna be clean. It's gonna be painless. Go back home.